Welcome to the Coaches Show. I'm Darren Joins, Williamson County Schools Athletic Director, and we are very pleased to have our first guest of the year. It's kind of an annual tradition here, WCTV. We've got the head football coaches at Fairview High School, Chris Hughes, and Page High School, Coach Charles Rathbone. Gentlemen, thank you for being here today. Thanks for having us. Now, we're here not just to talk, right? We're here to talk about the Battle of 840. This week's going to be kind of a different deal. Uh, we got a TV game uh, at Fairview, but we're going to do our game day, which I know you guys are very excited about. I talked met with the Fairview folks last week, Coach Hughes, they're pumped up. Uh, we're going to have that actually live streamed here on WCTV, so we're excited about that. Uh, first game of the year, and it's a game day. Now, let me ask both of you guys this question starting off, and I'll start with Coach Hughes. A traditional WCS rivalry, obviously. Uh, it's not – a region game, you're in different classifications, but still the Battle of 840 Coach Hughes is special. Oh, yes. You know, Paige used to be in our region and be a 3A team a few years back. I don't, and it doesn't seem like that long ago, uh, but now, um, yes, it's a, a big rivalry game and they're holding that trophy, keeping it polished up over there. So <laughs> we sure would like to get it back if uh, Rathbone would let us have it. Coach Rathbone, I know you're Team's excited about it, not only because it's game one, but it's a, it's a special game, let's face it. Yeah, you know, it's two uh, very similar teams, mirror teams. They've always kind of been the, uh, the redheaded stepchild of Williams County. They're not that big five, six A school, you know, 2,000 kids and the Ravenwoods and the Brentwoods and the Franklins. And, you know, I think our kids and I'm sure Fairview's kids feel like they've been overlooked a lot of years. And, you know, it's a chance for them to get on TV and, and to show that they're just as special as anybody else out there. Now, Coach Hughes, Coach Rathbone's talking about woe is us, and they're the 5A runner state runner-up runner up last year. Yeah. Well, I mean, 5A state runner-up versus a 3A team. And they're, was, and they're was, overlooked. 3A team that was eliminated <laughs> in the first round. No. I mean, I would say that would put us as a huge underdog, so <laughs> I feel like we're playing with house money. And now, Coach Rathbone's now, good at this point. Now, I was talking about traditional. Okay, traditional. <laughs> I was talking about going back in years past. In years past. We yeah. were, in fact – Rudderville, when it was, you know, we were real similar in the same region, and we both had that feeling. And I feel like now we, we've got a, a bigger chip on our shoulder than you guys do because you've grown so much. And we've grown, too, um, just not as, as large as Paige has. Paige has just built a – and Redbone's did a good job at the kids. I mean, you got 130 kids out. That's, that's crazy. I'd love to have that kind of numbers. Um, actually, I won't have enough helmets to fit them, but – uh, it'd be a good problem to have. But, Coach Hughes, I think that growth is coming out there at Fairview. It, I yeah, really I've, do. I've heard that for a long time. I, I think it I'm is. I'm looking for it. I've heard it. but uh, You know, if, if you think about Nolensville, though, mm -hmm. a few years ago, it's like people thought, oh, I'm going to move to Nolensville to say I'm in Williamson County. Well, now it's the – I think I looked the other day, and they had the second uh, highest home prices. Yeah. Or in Nolensville behind Brentwood ahead of Franklin. Yeah, we're definitely growing, and our home prices are definitely higher. No so, question. Um, I think it may change eventually. I just don't know if we'll grow as exponentially as uh, Paige did. I, I mean, mean, I don't know. What's your enrollment? I mean, now, the coach? governor is from Fairview. There right? you That's go. That's the elite of the elite. <laughs> Bill <laughs> Lee. Bill Lee. That's right. Yeah. I wonder Good if he'll point, be at the, Coach see if he can show up to the game and do the <laughs> coin toss. So. Now, listen, you've both been part of this game for years. Coach Hughes, uh, 15 times. This wow. is your 16th, 6 and 9 in this game. Coach Rathbone, this is number 11 for you, 6 and 4 after last season's 28 20 win at Page. Uh, Coach Rathbone, let's start with you. Your team, different region, different classification. You're playing in 5A, but you're playing an in county team. And also, you've, you've got Franklin and Independence on your schedule. So you're obviously pretty excited about playing WCS teams. Right. And, you know, we. Finding games is hard, you know it really is. So I mean, you gotta you gotta schedule where you can, and and we want to challenge our kids. They they have fun playing the county teams, and they want to they they like you know everybody knows everybody in the county. You know, even though we're from different areas of the county, they all know each other, and they like playing each other, and they like talking to smack and all the other stuff. So it's fun atmosphere. So if we truly say we do it for the kids, and sometimes you got to step out of your comfort zone and and do something for the kids. And this year it was playing Fair, uh, Franklin and Fairview and Independence. That's why we play Paige. Well, well I was going to talk about that, <laughs> Coach. I do think in football it's easier said than done when you've got the smaller numbers. Yeah. It, it's a, it can take a physical toll on your team. And although you're okay with, with, with playing Paige, obviously, every year, and we've talked about different times, maybe you adding a game, 
But that's not that simple to do when you're talking the number differences, right? It's not, and you worry about, you know, am I wanting to play a 5A school and risk a, an injury to a kid that I really need when we're playing the other 3A schools? But the fact that Paige is a lot, they're similar to us. You know, if they were a line up in a double tight end and smash mouth, you know, it may be a different thought process. Right. Uh, but the fact that Coach Rathbone throws the ball all over the field uh, really, you know, prepares us for teams down the road that can pass like Waverly, like other teams that we're going to play. Right. And uh, Westview, um, which is also a, another school that's really good and, and uh, challenges us. So um, it does nothing but make you better and stronger, even if you lose, to play better teams. The problem is you want to make it through there with all your players. Right. So that's the only real concern. And luckily the last few years, uh, most of our injuries have come against other teams. Uh, but I did, you know, watching film, Paige really, the, I, I think this is one of his hardest hitting teams, especially in the second, in the backfield, in the secondary. Uh, every time they come up, they're looking, they got bad intentions when they come up. And in the past, there's a lot of arm tackling. I didn't see a lot of that against uh, some of the teams they scrimmaged. So, um, you know, I hope that, you know, we can sustain it. but. Um, our kids are pretty tough and, and pretty resilient, so we'll we'll fight through it. And uh, and this game's gonna it's gonna be a, a sharpening game, make us sharper. Again, talking about tonight's battle of eight forty game, Page High School at Fairview. Coach Rathbone, and talking about you adding those WCS teams as your program has grown and the numbers have grown, did that make that easier to schedule those teams? You know, every year I've tried to play at least one 6A. You know, it used to be Ravenwood. I played Ravenwood and Centennial and years past Brentwood and Franklin. So I, I just kind of want to make sure that the kids, our program plays everybody in Williams County at some point. So I, I try to do that. It just happened to be this year, you know, I, I had to choose between Stewart's Creek or Independence as that second Williams, Williams County game. And, you know, and I was a big fan of Coach Blade and, and uh, really, really liked him. So he and I talked and we just, we just made it work. You well, know, so that's, 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 really, that's honestly how it worked out. Well, we're <laughs> glad you did, and you'll love competing against Coach Stidham, too, another, another great addition I've met to him, the so he's like a really good guy, so I've, I've enjoyed getting to know him so far. Yeah, we're happy. We obviously were disappointed to lose Coach Blade, but happy to have Coach Stidham as well. Game history, overall record, it dates way back. Page leads 21-13. Since 2014, it's 5-3, and three, Page, with that 28-20 win last year. Coach Hughes, you end your season last year six and five. A new region, which I, was pretty darn difficult, had some really good teams in there. You lose to Smith County in the first round, but I could tell, and again, we talked about this before we came on, I could really tell by listening to you and your players, got a little chip on your shoulder, I think, as a team, and I think you feel pretty confident in the kind of team that you could have this year uh, compared to maybe last year's team. Is that I, fair to say? Th this senior class can – have a really special year or they can you know have a mediocre year it's up to them but they have the talent they have the work ethic they're working hard you know you're always if we can stay healthy if we can do this we're going to be okay um, but this senior class is the first one I've had that hasn't won a playoff game and that's been the challenge to them so they're you know we want to win the state championship but it's one game at a time and they want to get off that snide and not be the first team in my coaching tenure that didn't make the playoffs to the second round. Um, so that's their goal this year is to make it as far as we can. And I think they definitely have the capability of doing that. But we have to win some games and set that up. Starting with this game, we have to get sharp. And I think Rathbone will agree too. A lot of times our, our starting personnel in this game is not the starting personnel week five. Like we are figuring it out also. Yeah. And uh, with no live, live action except for scrimmages where you're really trying to kind of protect people and hide things. You don't want them to see everything. So it'll be interesting, but this team definitely has potential to be really good, and I'm excited about this group. It's been fun to coach this this group of kids. Well, you can tell it that that excitement's there, again, not only from your players, but you as well. Coach Rathbone coming off a pretty magical season, 13-2, and two, state runner-up in 5A to Knoxville Powell. But I can tell, too, by listening to you at, at uh, Media Day, that you're, you were smarting from that loss. You're like, man, that was an opportunity, 42-34 loss. You felt like... We had our shot. We should have taken advantage of it. Yeah, you know, we're one bad call away on the opening drive from roughing that we didn't feel like was roughing and, you know, catching a kickoff and taking care of the ball and, and just not waiting three possessions to wake up from winning a state championship. So, you know, but I've told these guys that's last year. You know, we could always talk about last year for the rest of our lives, but that's not going to help us Friday night or, or any Friday night going into the season. 
So we got to get these guys ready to play. And I'm excited. You know, these uh, we got 14 seniors, about eight of them play. We're playing out a lot of sophomores. We're starting two freshmen. So, I mean, it's a, it's going to be a challenge for us. But like Chris said, you know, it's going to be several weeks before we really know who we are and what we are. You know, we can't put everything – I don't, I don't think we're smart if we put all of our eggs into this basket right here and say, hey, win or lose, win by 50, lose by 50, that that's the season. I just don't feel like that's, a, that's an accurate portrayal of this game. And I want to piggyback off him, Darren. If his, his, I'm, we were so excited at Fairview for Paige to get that far. Like every game they won, that one they had a battle in West Tennessee. And when they won that game, our kids were excited for them. Uh, not only because they're in the county, but you know we, we're at each other, at each other, but after that game, we're, we're in different places, so we root them on, we root everybody on, but it was really special for them last year in the fact that we lost to them by eight points week one, and we would have loved to have said, we only lost to the five A state champions by eight points. <laughs> so, uh, and it, we, we can still say that about the runner up. Yeah, but, sure. But we were, we were cheering them on. That was a great, a special year for Coach Rathbone and him, and at Fairview, we're, we were very supportive of the page. Uh, team going into the playoffs. Do you think that goes back to what you guys were talking to earlier that uh, from the get-go y'all kind of felt like you were the two schools that were together and similar? Do you think that's part of that? Well, I, I'll, I'll tell you the big talk around, and I'm being as honest as I can, is our kids are more, they prepare for after the game. They're excited to get with Fairview and to meet some of those guys and, and kneel down and do their prayer after the game. And, you know, so they've already started preparing on that, you know, and started thinking about that. Are they preparing for the game? You better believe it. They're working hard. I mean, they, they want to get after it. They're ready to mix it up. But they, they respect Fairview and, and really anybody we play. And, but they're excited about just the, the little chitty, chit-chatting after the game, good game, you know, good season. That, you know, they, I got a good group of kids that, that enjoy other teams and meeting them. You know? The same thing for you guys? Great leaders. This senior class has such good leaders. Like, I feel like if I wasn't there and the coaches didn't show up, they could run practice and it would be organized and they would do the right things. Um, our only team rules do the right thing, and this senior class lives that. Like, it is is really good. Like, he's talking about his leaders and our leaders are talking about, hey, let's do this, let's do that. That's that's something you don't see a lot unless you've got really good leadership who would have, you know, who take the team and by example, not necessarily yelling and doing that kind of stuff, but by example, they do the right things and lead. And they, they are, everyone knows there's more than just football here, but what a building tool this is for us and them to start that season off that way and go at it hard and still be able to say, hey, good luck to y'all the rest of the way. Yeah, Literally. that's great. Yeah. That's great. Can still be very competitive and not be. You know, silly about it. Afterwards. No, right. some people don't even want to shake hands. Yeah. You know, last year we had a, a, a player that, that did that, was emotional after the game, and we've addressed that, and, and we, uh, we know that's not going to happen again. Uh, but it's just not right. You know, it, nobody wants to lose. It stings. You know, when I yeah. shake hands, I'm, I'm stinging too. But you have to be able to be the, the kind of person with the kind of integrity and character to say, you got us, good game, it's over with. You know, that's interesting you bring that up, and Coach Rathbone, I'd be interested to see what you would say about that too. You know, you see talk because you see things that happen, not necessarily here, but you see things that where players get into it after the game or the coach gets into it with the other coach yes. after the game. I think it's maybe a sad commentary that we have to talk about, should we shake hands after the game? I hope it never gets to that. Yeah, you know, anybody can win, right? That's easy. You know, a lot of coaches have talked about this for hundreds of years. You know, anybody can win, but it, it's hard. It takes a really special character to be able to lose with class. You know, I, I talked to Jake McNamara after the season, and he told me, he goes, I think the best thing to ever happen to us last year was losing to Independence. Now, we hated it at the time. We felt like we should have won that game. But that says a lot about what they learned from a loss. You know, and it makes you sure. either one or two things. You're either going to come back and work harder, or you're going to show your true self and quit. And I just don't think our guys have any quit in them. Very well said. Coach uh, Hughes, let's talk a little bit about the region. So, to me, White House seems to be the most obvious competition. You obviously uh, talk about Waverly for a lot of different reasons. I know they, uh, they took care of business there uh, on that uh, TV game last year. But, again, this is me. I'm, I'm outside so I can talk about it. I've mm -hmm. kind of got that September 30th at Fairview versus White House game circled saying, that one may be deciding the region championship. It may be, uh, but last year, Waverly, us, and White House, all three games mattered to decide it. Um, 
And you got to hope somebody else like White House Heritage or someone else doesn't sneak up and say, hey, we're good too. We're coming at you this year because we have some pretty good parity in our region. But those, both of those games are huge. That White House game is a huge game, and that's actually my birthday, so you can like send me. Oh, one. yeah. So I'm wanting a bird. All I want to win against White House that night. <laughs> not that much. No, not much. <laughs> Do you like much. the new region compared to the old one? I love the better competition. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think we we did not get ourselves ready for playoffs, and one of the reasons we got knocked out in the first round was that our region games weren't helping us, and I didn't have enough pages on the schedule. Yeah. And by the, you know, we played page week one. Well, they forgot how tough that was by the time we're week eight. Right. Um, in fact, that's what I was gonna say about that too. In week one, this is a big deal, and we're all upset when we lose or, or happy when we win, but by week six, nobody's even thinking about the page right. preview game. So, um, but I do think our region is top to bottom a lot stronger. And uh, with the addition of White House, White House Heritage and Waverly, we have got like, three or four teams, like somebody in last year, somebody's not going to make the playoffs. It's a pretty good team. Right. And that's something you, you don't see in a lot of regions. There's a lot of top-heavy regions. Coach Rathbone, on, in your region, again, this is me talking, I feel like uh, your team in Nowensville, or maybe the class of that region, and October 7th at Nowensville could be one of those games, again, we circle and say this could be for a region championship. Uh, I think that's a potential game day type of atmosphere there at Nowensville. I know they'd be excited about it too. I know there's more than just two teams in the region, but in my thoughts, I think you're going to play them twice. Yeah, I hope not. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know especially if we win the first one. But, uh, Are you saying you hope you make that second game and they don't make that second? <laughs> yeah, I would be happy with that one. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Nolansville's got all their kids back and they're very talented. You know, I would also say you got to watch out for Lincoln County. They got 10 starters on both sides of the ball. We had uh, Franklin County in 707, and they beat the brakes off of us 707. Very athletic. So uh, we had Franklin County and Lincoln County could be a, be a problem for both of us. And, of course, Bobby Sharp going to Columbia, you don't know what to expect from there. But, uh, but I would think Nolansville. Nolansville, Coach Derek does a, such a good job, and they got some, they got some dudes on that team. So we're about to play our best. And wing team in Columbia is going to look different, too. For that's, sure. That, that worries me. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> that worries that, that, That's for sure. Hey, uh, Coach Hughes, let's talk about your offense a little bit. And we can talk about a lot of guys, but Layden Grant, that's a guy that on this show every week, it's like the Layden Grant update. Look at his stats. I mean, he offensively and Defense. on the other side of the ball. But let's talk about him offensively. Big workhorse for you guys. He is. And a leader. Yes, he is. That He's that leader I was talking about. He's the one making contact and setting things up and – just doing the right things, but Layden, no one works harder in the weight room and on the practice field than Layden, and it shows at the games. And uh, he is our workhorse, and he has to be ready and be in shape to go, you know, I don't come off the field. You know, he's that kind of kid, and uh, and it's tough against a team that's hitting him like Paige is going to hit him. So he's got to be able to be resilient, keep bouncing, and he's he's one of the toughest kids I've ever coached. I have no doubt that Layden Grant's stats are going to be worthy of Mr. Football status this year, and, and that's our goal for him is – to reach that, like uh, he was real close last year to being a finalist, and uh, I think this year, if he has any kind of year like he did last year, 1,500 yards is very attainable for him. And we split the ball up with people, so it's not like he gets—he's not carrying the ball 30 times a game. Uh, he's not going to get that right. kind of workload. Uh, but at the same time, he makes the most of his carries and he gets the tough yards. You know, if it's the short yardage and that things, we got him, we got Ken Curtis, but uh, late in yards after contact would be off the charts if we measured that in high school. And is it a little bit easier from your spot and then maybe even the team offensively that Mays McCall, he's the guy at quarterback. This time yeah. last year we were talking about there may be some splitting of the snaps, but yeah. it, it's made it's Mays's job. It's it's Mays. Mays is Mays has been the guy from day one and Mays last year probably would have been the starter if if he had some injury issues and Kennedy kind of stepped up and right. took that role. Both are great kids, but Mays is a natural leader. And his first game is against Paige on my TV 30. So you talk about some feelings of like, I need to, you know, take care of the football, do some things right. The, the only thing about him being a young quarterback, he's a junior. He's been in that pressure situation in basketball so many times that I'm not as worried about him. Like, I feel like he's ready for that. He's ready for the light because he's the one that's going to take the shot at the end of the game if the Fairview basketball team is going to win. So now he's going to take the snap if the Fairview football team is going to win. So... I expect big things from Mays this year. I'm really excited about his development, and, and I'm really excited because he's 100% healthy, and that's, that's part of it because he is a, a 
good looking, strapping young man. So uh, his presence out there will be noticed. Coach Rathbone, and I know we're probably not going to have a big announcement today on the starter, but uh, you lose Jake McNamara, but you've got options, and you've said it over and over. If our guy last year was Colin Hurd, we'd have been okay. Yeah, and I, and I think that's true this year too. You know, we got a couple of backup quarterbacks that are pushing him that I think are eventually going to be really good. You know, I like Wee Bush, the way he runs. He's the fastest player on the team. You know, went to a camp, ran a, a legit 4-5. Uh, you got uh, Jonathan Palmer, who is Carson Palmer's nephew, but right now Colin just leadership and and you know yeah. starting out early just the leadership and his air and air, you know just how people respond to him you know that's kind of the guy right now and and you know he's got to play both ways as well and and see you know hopefully he can hold up but I wouldn't be absolutely terrified if we had to go with one of our other guys. And you're not changing the offense over the change of quarterback. I'm never going to change the offense. <laughs> well, I mean, look what happened last year. Colin came in he and did. beat us. He threw the touchdown and beat us. Like and he and led the team in tackles. That yes, he, yeah. he, he, he beat us on both sides of the ball. And we know that Colin's got some moxie. There's nobody that's out there with more moxie than Colin. And uh, so we've got to put a hat on him offensively and block him. And, and, and defensively, we got to get after him because he plays with a lot of confidence. And if you let him get going – is that when, when we knocked out the quarterback last year and he had to go in, we decided let's just get up all on him, beat us right over the top for a long touchdown that cost us the game. No, he played great in that game. Yes. Uh, let's talk about your defenses a little bit. Coach Hughes, we'll start with you. Uh, I think you feel better about your defense, especially maybe where they, they were at at the end of the year last year, but you had some injuries, some, to, to some, be fair. Yes. But you feel better right now going into the season defensively than you did last year. I feel a lot better. And, it, and really, it's a lot of the same people. It's just that year growth. Sure. Um, and uh, we got a new defense coordinator. Tommy Ruiz is now our defense coordinator. And uh, we've been flying around at practice a little bit more, uh, a little bit faster, a little bit more intentional, like on our – defensive production and going after things. And, and I think this is one of those games where you've just got to come downhill and, and play hard and, and try to match his Page's intensity. And, and I'm excited to see what our defense is going to do. You know, we still have some questions with the defense, but I think we're going to know after this game. It's your <laughs> so, great test. Yeah, great Co test. Coach Rathbone, your team defensively, I thought it was interesting. I was going back to look at my notes. Uh, you play Marshall County, uh, scrimmage them, I think give up 29 points. But, but something I noticed was, number one, that happened last year. And number two, I noticed maybe with you more than anybody, the scrimmages, you're playing different people. You're not necessarily that work. You want to win, right? But it seems like to me, maybe as much as anybody I've seen on the football side, is that doesn't really impact you. No, but I do think that has led to us getting off to some slow starts in the last couple of years. But I'm a big believer that we got to get good at our base stuff. You know, we got to get good at our fundamental base defense and, and during the preseason I think that's when you do it you know and if you get that and then you start adding in the blitzes and the stunts and the coverages and and, and I think we're to the stage where we could do that I'm, I'm excited to see what our front seven does you know I feel like we're we should be better this year in the front seven we should be we should be able to stop the run we're bigger we're stronger we're fit more physical um, had a transfer come in that's going to help with that um, we're young we're going to be playing a lot of freshmen and sophomores, but I, I, I have faith in them. I think they'll do a good job. you got Herb back on the outside, Hazard back for his uh, sophomore year. You know, he's 25 pounds heavier than he was last year and still moves well. So I'm excited to see what those guys do in, a, in another year. Last year was our first year in this defense. So, I mean, uh, year two, they should be some growth. We always talk about special teams, especially early in the year. But in this particular game, every time we're together, we're like, Special teams has made a big difference in this game in the past, Coach Hughes. It has, and it worries me this year. Uh, <laughs> and just we're not. We, we'll just uh, score and yeah, maybe not uh, to worry about our, it too much. Uh, our kicking game on both sides is not as good as it was last year, and and I with the coverage teams, and this is another thing Rathbone will attest to. We haven't done anything live with a kick returner and all of that, so you just don't know. And it's one play that can change the whole right. outcome of the game. So that's why I play in week one. It's kind of hard on both of us because, I mean, <laughs> those special teams, it may be. I think we would be good starting on the 30 and just going. Uh, <laughs> hey, I'll go for that right now. I hate special teams. Right now. Right now. Hey, punt, punt is my least favorite. Uh, 
I don't mind kickoff because I know we just scored. Yeah, but yeah. other than that, I'm not a. a you know, fan it's at funny all. to hear the football coaches. I'm always fascinated talking to coaches uh -huh. uh, and finding where there's similarities with other sports. For me, it was always out of bounds plays. Yeah. It's like, oh, the season's starting tonight, and we haven't worked on an out of bounds. Yeah. Hey, get it in. Yeah, exactly, and just get the punt off. <laughs> yeah. We don't care how far it goes. Snap it and it kick off. it. And please don't press us the first game. So Maybe we, we should we agree to go dead point. on the line on punts and get, let, just set it I'll up. I'll sign up for that right now. <laughs> you know, what's sad? We got a pretty good punter. You know, yeah. the kid moved yeah. in, and he, he's a good punter. Right. We just can't get the ball to the punter. Yeah, so right. that, that's yeah. the problem. So, I mean, that, and that, you know, that was uh, nine points. We gave it to Marshall County last week. Had a block punt where they tackled him before the ball got there, and and then uh, the safety. Um, it was just, I don't know. It was just well, they're really good at running <laughs> fake punts on us too. So we've been working on stopping fake punts and yeah, stopping all side kicks because we know, you know, we're about to go back to the spread punt. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do that anyway. So we'll do like we did in flag football. We'll just put it down. Right? That's what I'm saying. We start on the we third. declare yep. punt. Yeah, that's it. So let's talk a, a little bit more specifically about tonight, Coach Hughes offensively, especially early on, what would let us know that, hey, it's, it's, it's going okay right now for if, Fairview if, offensively? If we can move the ball on that front seven that he's really excited about, which they are really good. And so we've got to put a hat on the hat and make some little holes that Layden and them can squeeze through and get us three or four yards. Uh, if they're kitting us as soon as we touch the ball in the backfield every time and our blocking assignments aren't good and those guys are blowing us up, it's going to be a long night for Fairview. What What about your team offensively, Coach? Well, we're hoping to. We, we got to be able to run the ball. You know, we, you know, we got to give a clean pocket. Let Colin get the ball out of his hands. We're hoping to run the ball a little bit, move the quarterback around. They like to bring a lot of pressure, a lot of stunts, a lot of things like that. So we got to be able to pick that up with our with our very young offensive line. And uh, if we can do that, then I think we could have a chance to be pretty good. Defensive side of the ball in particular coach when you talk about that depth your defense especially late in the game you know what are some things to look for to go okay so they're, they're all right if you see the same numbers on the field that's a good thing <laughs> uh if you see different numbers going out it's going to be a bad thing there but we're going to try to adjust too i mean we debate you know I don't know if Rappin would just tell me what he's doing. I could tell you how we're going to play. But <laughs> do we run our nickel guys out? Do we run our you know jumbo guys out? Are they going to smack? You know, we just don't. He doesn't know. We don't know. So it's going to be those halftime adjustments and right. seeing what's going on. What about your team uh, defensively tonight, Coach uh, Rathbone? Obviously, the Fairview offense. I think it's it's obviously a team that can test your team right off the bat, game one, the way they play offensively. Yeah, and really you got to fall back on what you've done in preseason. So for us, we've struggled to get off the field in third down. So we got to get off the field. You know, we had Marshall County in the opening drive, three third and tens or longer, and they converted all three of them. So we just got to get off the field on third down and play our gap assignments and, and get after the quarterback. And, and, and you know, we want to we want to put pressure on him and get hits on him at number 11 as much as possible. So that's what we're hoping to do. Well, gentlemen, I appreciate you being here again talking tonight's uh, Battle of 840, Page High School at Fairview. Excited to be there for game day. Again, I know it's a TV game, so it's going to be really exciting. Uh, Coach Rathbone, I did want to mention before we uh, got mm -hmm. off the air here, Jake Wilson, young man in your program who's been dealing with some stuff. Uh, obviously, we're thinking about him and his family today. Yes, sir. Jake, we just want you to know we're with you. Um, had a good meeting, vigil for you last night. and. Obviously, your prayers are in our hearts, and we're always here. And Coach Hughes, I know you guys too in that Fairview community. Yeah, we'll we'll do the same, and and just to let Jake know we support him, and that uh, I think the saying is, "You got this, Jake." Right? Yeah, that's right. You got this, Jake. Again, gentlemen, thank you for being here. Looking forward to the game tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for the Coaches Show. We'll see you next time.